In Pixar's short film Lou, we can see a lot of the techniques that have been utilised in other Pixar short films made before it. I think that it's down to these simple filmmaking rules that ensure the films are always entertaining, identifiable and are able to tell a story in a very short amount of time. Last year I made a video on this that highlights the fact that there's never any dialogue in any of these Pixar short films, which allows the characters' actions to tell the story. And also that there's a heavy use of the Kuleshov effect that had been described by Alfred Hitchcock. In this video I'd like to go over some more techniques that Pixar uses in order to quickly establish characters and prompts the audience to characterise the characters in the films themselves. Now, the first thing that you'll see in any Pixar short film is just the title, followed by an establishing shot of the location that the film will take place in. Now, the title might seem like a simple introduction to the film, but it's also an embodiment of the tone of the film that's being made. In the short film Red's Dream, the audience is shown this rainy noir night leading up to the introduction of the character Red, a dreamy bicycle. In the short film Lifted, the title sequence shows the stereotypical crops that aliens are conventionally sighted at, along with a sci-fi-esque title of the film. The same goes for the film Lou. We see all of the letters fallen off from the lost and found box that make up Lou's name. These are all important. They give the audience an expectation as to what the film might be about. Pixar relies on expectations and stereotypes a lot in their short films. And if there are no expectations, then Pixar will establish one. In the case of Lou, we're showing a playground with the kids during their school break. And where you have a playground, you're going to have a bully that comes along with it. This is simple for the audience to identify because there is already a stereotype that's been put into place. Whereas in the film La Luna, there are characteristics that are established by the characters themselves. It's established that the three generations of men in the family have their own traits, shown by the way that they wear their hat, and also by what kind of tool they use to clean the moon of stars in the third act. The kid in the film is indecisive at the beginning, but as he figures out a solution to the problem that neither his father or grandfather can figure out, we as an audience can see that he has developed as a character. This is shown through the new way that he wears his hat, and also by the different tool he uses compared to his grandfather and father. By relying on the audience to project the stereotypes onto the screen, Pixar has more time to tell a story and manipulate the expectations of the characters. The subject of the characters and their development in the film can also pave the way for a moral end to the story. In the film Piper, the story is of a bird out of water and how courage can lead to happiness. In the film Feast, the story shows that self-sacrifice will make you happier than selfishness. In the case of the film Lou, the moral of the story is that you can be happier by being kind than being a bully. Now, with all of that being said, there is another aspect of Pixar's films that tells story efficiently. This is known as the Kiki and Boober effect. Before I explain, I'd like to just first point out that I was introduced to this phenomena by the YouTube channel Now You See It. Uh, he does great videos with some of the same subject as mine, so I'd highly recommend checking out his channel. Now, the premise of the Kiki and Booper effect is this. A German psychologist by the name of Wolfgang Kaula notices that people seem to see a physical relation between the word Kiki and the word Boba with these two pictures of different shapes. When asked which shape best represented the word Boba or Kiki, with this shape, over 97% of people said that it represented Boba instead of the word Kiki. Now, if you look at any animated film, you'll be able to see that characters are represented as either Kiki or Boba. You'll find that characters that are represented as evil will have sharp features. In the film Snow White, you can see that the evil queen will have sharp fingernails and longer facial features, which are associated more with the image resembling Kiki. Whereas Snow White has more rounded and smooth features, which is more relatable with the word boba. This effect is usually very implicit, depending on how apparent the characteristics of the character are shown in the film. Looking at the previous example of the film La Luna, we can see three different structures to the faces of each member of the family. 
The innocent boy has a rounded face with small and smooth features, whereas his father is more sharp and big, with only a round bottom half to his face. In comparison to both of these characters, the grandfather has features that are a mixture of the son and the father, and also a mixture of Kiki and Boba. His beard is long and straight, but also has curls to it, making it more round. It's apparent in a lot of Disney films that some of the characters you find can even change their features as the film progresses. This flashback in Toy Story 3 shows the physical change in mood and features of Chuckles. With a broken button, eyebrows and hair, his features become more sharp and less like his original complete round self. So you can tell the audience exactly what the character is going to be like by shaping them in a way that either resembles Kiki or Boba. Lou is shaped a lot like Boba where he has very round eyes and baggy dressing made up of just one jumper. It makes him less threatening and dorky. Whereas JJ, the bully, is more of a larger character in comparison, who has a more square face compared to everyone else in the film, and is obviously made out to be the bad guy. You can even see that in flashbacks to the time where he was more innocent, his face is rounder and he is a lot smaller. Although it's a phenomenon that's subtle to the audience, it works well to immediately decode what a character without any kind of backstory or exposition is like. It's a very implicit technique that saves Pixar time in order to tell a full story and allows for character development as well as leaves room for the audience to see the moral in the story. It's another reason why these stories are told in animation. The little details that might be missed in action-based shorts can be magnified by creating wacky characters that demand the screen. I'm always so impressed with the short films that Pixar has made in the last 30 years. Not only have they become pioneers in the animation process, but they manage to tell such great stories in ways that can't really be told in any other way. It was 30 years ago this year, in 2018, that Pixar won their first Academy Award in 1988. It would be nice to see it happen again. Alright guys, I really appreciate it if you've got to this point in the video. If you have, then you can leave a rating below to let me know what you thought. And since you've stayed so long, please leave a comment saying, always wear a helmet to let me know that you've got to this part of the video. I'd also like to say thanks for over 12,000 subscribers. In this past week, this channel has gained over 500 subscribers, which to me is absolutely amazing. Okay, that's it for this video. My name is James Hayes and thank you so much for watching.